Greetings and welcome to this installment of the Introduction to Strength of Materials or Mechanics of Materials. And we have been discussing normal and shear stresses in the first part. And now in the second part, we will discuss yield strength. In the first part, we had a clevis and a pin and a tang here that were set up and we had dimensions showing and forces on either end and we were able to calculate the normal stress of 150 megapascals and the shear stress on the pin of 191 megapascals. Now we have to ask the question well is this going to work with materials that we've chosen? Well we didn't choose any materials yet so before we go there, going to talk about what yield strength is. If you notice with this clevis situation, the clevis bar here and the tang are both in tension. This is an example of a tension test where a machine has a grip here and a grip here and this is a sample right in this area this thing right here is a sample and this pulls up and this pulls down or one is held fixed more likely and this sample here stretches and stretches until it is broken well when it first starts off it starts off at zero strain which means it hasn't stretched at all and zero stress but as it increases the force that increases the stress and that also increases the strain or uh, it tends to stretch so initially it's a very straight slope for many materials including that steel that we were just showing so this slope here, this rise over run, uh, creates what's called Young's modulus or the elastic modulus. Now, for many materials, we don't want to get up to this point. We don't want to get up to the yield where suddenly it doesn't uh, stretch linearly anymore because after this point, it will have deformed in such a way that it can't come back. If it's anywhere along this line, it can come back. We'll talk more about that in other chapters. But if you get much past here, it's not going to come back to where it was. So it's what we call plastically deformed. So we usually want to make sure it's uh, below, well below this uh, yield strength. So that's why that yield strength number is really, really important. So if we go to some of these uh, charts of different materials we can find some materials with different yield strengths so here's a chart um, that I found online somewhere and here's our stress symbol of Sigma with a Y that's the yield strength in megapascals well if you noticed from before we had um, stress of 150 megapascals so we could say choose this uh, structural A36 steel, which is very common steel, it's structural, so it probably wouldn't be used in this situation. But uh, just for argument's sake, we're going to choose this one. It's got uh, uh, 250 megapascals of its yield uh, at yield. So that means up here is going to be 250, but our design is only going to see 150. So we're going to be here well away from that. Okay, so let us write this down. Now, in the book that I use, they use the, the uh, for material properties, instead of the Greek letters, they use the uh, Arabic letters. So SY denotes a material property, not just something that's measured or applied, but a material property, something that's associated with a particular material. And so SY of A36 steel is 250 megapascals. And we want to make sure that that is greater than our 
applied load. So stress applied is 150 megapascals and because 250 is greater than 150 that's good uh, for now all right so um, that's for our normal stress so 250 is what it would take to make it yield but 150 is all that's applied so we're going to be under that so that's good. So let's see what we have for shear strength. Notice there's not a tau Y or anything like that. Uh, for ductile materials and metals, um, especially metals, uh, we can make uh, an approximation. Okay, it depends on a number of things, but we're going to use what the book suggests, which is the yield strength and shear is approximately half of the yield strength. So that would be half of 250 megapascals, which is 125 megapascals. Now if you want to compare this, this should be greater than the applied shear stress and as we saw before our applied shear stress is 191 megapascals and guess what? This is not good. So based just on yield strength, A36 steel might be okay for the clevis, but not for the pin, because the pin is undergoing shear stress of 191 megapascals, and the yield strength is only 125 megapascals. So we are going to exceed what this can take for the pin. So what do we do? Probably best to change the material at this point. So let's go back to our chart here and we could instead choose the tool steel that's here. See this? Got a yield strength of 703 megapascals. So um, definitely a step up almost three times as much. All right, so if we change the pin material to L to tool steel our yield strength is 703 megapascals which means that our yield strength in shear is half of that so it's be 352 megapascals and that means we compare that to the applied we would hope that it's going to be larger now by the way uh, we should go back here and say that this did not work out but it should be larger. Our yield strength should be larger than our applied stress. Well, it was 191 megapascals, and there we go. And it does check out. This is true. 352 megapascals is larger than 191, and so that's good for now.
Okay, in this video, we discussed yield strength. And this is a, an application of what happens when you put real materials under uh, conditions of stress. Real materials are going to break. They break after applying a lot of stress over, uh, uh, over a distance and they'll break and they'll bend and uh, they will deform into ways and shapes that you don't want. So very often we try to keep them uh, in this region which is linear and then they will spring back uh, and that spot that we're trying to avoid is the yield point. So we always want to be cognizant uh, to keep the stress that we're putting on a material below that. All right, so we chose a material, A36, which is cheap, but it's actually a structural steel. We would, probably wouldn't use it for this uh, application, but uh, we just picked it and we found that uh, its yield strength is greater than the applied stress, which is great for now, and um, the yield stress, though, would not work for the pin, so we uh, had to choose something different in this case. Um, the tool steel that was on that chart and that ended up being uh, definitely larger than uh, the applied shear stress and so now that's good. In the next segment we will discuss the design issues that might come up and we will have to uh, look at our material choices one more time to see if they make sense from uh, better engineering design practice. I hope this has helped your understanding of normal shear stresses and yield strength and uh, hope that you can give me some feedback and that you will continue learning using these videos.